Please welcome to the stage, Erica Sigurdsson! Thank you! This is fun. This is our 30th show of the tour so far. Yeah, which is super exciting. It only took two nights of me sleeping alone in a king-size bed to wonder why I ever got married. <laughs> I mean, you search for that one person your whole life, and then you find them, and you're like, get off me! <laughs> Last year when I got COVID, it was the best 12 days of my life. <laughs> I moved into the spare bedroom. I had my own bed, my own Netflix, my own temperature. My husband was bringing me all my meal. It was like an all-inclusive. I was like, I love this. After 10 days, Jay was like, are you coming back to bed? And I was like, eh, eh. This is for your protection. Also, I'd like breakfast at seven tomorrow. Please. We have been together for 22 years. Oh, sorry, I'm back. Um, yeah, that's a long time. All the good ones. But we are, we are common law married? Common law. One person. No one respects it. No one respects common law. My mother hates the word common law. She's like, I do not like that you're living in sin. I'm like, well, don't worry, Mom. It gets a little less sinful every year. <laughs> right now, we're living in slight wrongdoing. <laughs> yeah. I actually think God's okay with what we do every second Thursday. <laughs> He's got bigger fish to fry, you know what I mean? I think God's on Jay's side now. He's like, Erica, you could be a little more sinful. <laughs> I'm reading. <laughs> the look of disappointment that comes over people's faces when you say you're common law, which is weird, because like, you don't know me personally, but like, you just somebody will be like, oh, how long have you been married? And I'm like... There's no beginning. <laughs> and then I go, oh, we're common law. And just a little. Hmm. Hmm. That look of disappointment, that must be how it feels to tell someone you're a volunteer firefighter. <laughs> Which... Someone knows a volunteer firefighter <laughs> real well. Which I actually don't think is fair. I think volunteer firefighters deserve more respect. Like they have to go through all the same training as the regular firefighters that are like cooking chili half the time. I see them at Safeway, I know what they're up to. The volunteers go through all the same training. They put in an eight-hour shift at Best Buy and then still go save your house. Right? More, more respect. Yes. Yeah. Good for them. And I am a volunteer wife. Yeah. Thank you. I'm not legally required to stay, but I put in the work. <laughs> I'm a hero. <laughs> Our problem is, is that we actually did get engaged. We've been engaged for 15 years. <laughs> that wasn't the joke part. <laughs> Just me giving you a little insight into my life. Glad you got a giggle. Um, 
Yeah, so we got engaged. We had dated for six years, and the whole time we dated, Jay was like, we don't need to define our relationship by society standards. Yeah, one of these guys. You know what I mean? Like, just phrasing it like he's above it all. And then, in 2007, I went to Afghanistan to entertain the... Well, obviously, to entertain the troops. Um, <laughs> You guys are like, what, on a timeshare? Um, yeah, he proposed to me the day before I left for Afghanistan. I didn't know how to take that. Like, was he hedging his bets or? I think maybe it was when you live in Vancouver, you don't feel like you need to define your relationship with your girlfriend. But when your girlfriend is going to an army base with 12,000 soldiers... <laughs> suddenly you want to define the relationship. <laughs> and I had like a suspicion that he was going to propose because I go through his stuff. <laughs> And I thought it would be funny if I proposed to him before he proposed to me. Like, do you think it's weird if a girl proposes to a guy? No? Okay, see, I know I shouldn't think it's funny because I'm a feminist, but uh, not funny. I shouldn't think it's weird. It wouldn't be funny, but I shouldn't think it's weird if a girl proposes because I am a feminist, but I'm a situational feminist. <laughs> like, I apply feminism where needed. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Equal pay, feminist. Equal rights, feminist. The bill hits the table. <laughs> Math is hard. Numbers are scary. And I wasn't gonna buy him a diamond ring. Like, that would be weird. I wasn't gonna buy him a ring and get down like this. First of all, I make this move. He's not even thinking jewelry. <laughs> He's actually really disappointed. <laughs> We just had to get our wills done before Christmas, which is super fun way to spend an afternoon. Um, and you might think like, aren't you a little old to just be getting wills done now? And before, a few years ago, all we had was debt. So like death was like, fuck, we won. <laughs> we got away with it. But somehow we've accumulated like a little bit. And so his parents were like, you guys need to get your wills done. So first of all, I don't know if getting a will done by a lawyer is going to greatly affect the value of your estate. Maybe you don't really need a will. <laughs> the lawyer was sitting across from us and he's like, this is going to be about $1,500. What? My sister gets nothing then. That was her nest egg. <laughs> and so before we go to the appointment, the lawyer emails each of us like a little booklet worksheet to do, like your RSPs, what you have, what happens if you die, who you want to leave stuff. It's like super awkward. Um, and I wish I had peeked at Jay's paper before the appointment. <laughs> because we get in front of the lawyer and he goes, okay, let's start with you, Jay. Have you thought about what would happen in case of your death? And Jay goes, I have, and I've taken out life insurance. I want to make sure Erica is taken care of. <laughs> Which made my answers... <laughs> even worse. Because the lawyer's like, okay, that's great, Jay. Because, Erica, you have to think about, like, what would your life look like if Jay died before you? What I had prepared was more of a vision board. <laughs> Like, I had cut out furniture of how I'd redecorate. <laughs> right?
right? Like my style, finally. I had a mock-up of my Tinder profile. <laughs> Just because you have to be ready. The lawyer looks down and goes, is that pictures of you and Jason Momoa? <laughs> I don't know, people ask us all the time, like, especially because like, they're like, how do you make your relationship last 22 years? That's amazing. And I don't know if there's one piece of advice I could give people. Like, you have to learn how to speak to your partner to like, get what you want and manipulate. No. Nope. <laughs> That's a harsh word. It's just, I, like, I never wanted to be a wife that nagged. I did not want to be a nagging wife. But then Jay didn't want to be a husband who did shit he said he was going to do. <laughs> So, now we're in a bit of a pickle. <laughs> so like, three months ago, we got a medicine cabinet and I was so excited to get this medicine cabinet for the bathroom, because we live in an apartment. I don't know if there's apartment people here. at all of you with your yards. <laughs> Good for you. Okay, well, if you don't understand apartment living, um, I live in a tiny box in the sky. <laughs> so space is very important. So I was so excited. We finally got this medicine cabinet. We bring it home. I go to get the tools. And Jay's like, oh, I don't have time to hang it up today. And I was like, cool. Next Saturday rolls around. I'm like, hey, what's up? How about we hang up the medicine cabinet? He's like, no, I don't have time today. Cool. <laughs> Next Saturday, I try a different approach. I go, hey, I have to run to Shoppers Drug Mart super quick just to replace all my prescriptions because they fell on the ground. <laughs> I don't have a safe place to put them. Maybe when I get back, we can hang up the medicine cabinet. <laughs> Spoiler alert, he doesn't have time. <laughs> so now I'm like, okay, it's on. <laughs> Sunday night, he goes to bed. I take the level out of his tool cabinet. I put it on the kitchen counter. He gets up Monday morning for work. He's just grabbing his thermos and he stops and he he's, what are you doing with my level? And I go, oh, don't worry about it. Have a good day. <laughs> And then as he leaves, I lock the door behind him. And I know he's nervous. So I wait an hour, and I send him a text, hey, where's your drill? He's like, what are you up to? I ignore this text. I let him sit for two hours at work wondering what on earth I'm doing with his drill and his level, which... Joke's on him, I'm not even using the level. <laughs> Just using it to get tall stuff. <laughs> so then right before lunch, I sent him another text and I go, hey, can you explain drywall anchors to me? <laughs> Do they hold 100 pounds each or is that for the whole pack? <laughs> I get back in all caps, what? the fuck are you doing? I shoot back a picture of me holding his drill, wearing swim goggles, with the biggest drill bit I could find. It is going to tear the walls apart. I went all the way from the little baby one to the very, very end, and then I found one that looked like a spatula, and <laughs> he's like, stop what you're doing, I'm on my way home. <laughs> now here is the way, the only way this works is if you make it look like you were actually about to hang this up yourself. So I had the medicine cabinet out, I had all the tools set out, plus extra tools, like I heated up a glue gun. <laughs> And 
and I'm just waiting to hear the key go into the lock. So I'm standing on the tub, like at the edge of the tub, holding the drill. Because you know when you're hanging something heavy, you like to balance on a slippery surface. <laughs> and I'm holding the drill, and I, as soon as I hear the key go into the lock, I give the drill a little kick, like a little zhoo, zhoo. <laughs> the door flies open, and he's like, stop, I'll hang it up. And I was like, oh, but only if you have time. And that is how you stay together 22 years. <laughs> we accidentally made friends with a couple who lives in our building during the pandemic. <laughs> and when I say accidentally, like here's, if you live in an apartment, the only good thing is people have to buzz up before they come to your door. You're protected. <laughs> you people in your houses, you are vulnerable. <laughs> people can come back at any time, just knock, knock, at front door, back door, you don't even know where they're coming from. <laughs> I'm safe in my tower. So it's risky to make friends within the building, right? The call's coming from inside the house. You gotta be careful. But then mid-pandemic, there was this one woman that I kept noticing come into the building twice a week with one of those little Costco fold-down dollies with like two cases of wine at a time on it. <laughs> you can only watch this happen so many times before you feel like you're gonna be like, hey. <laughs> My name's Erica. <laughs> we should be friends. And we did become friends. She works at a winery, Mwah, my dream friend. I know nothing else about her. And <laughs> twice a week, we'd be up on the rooftop deck, having wine, living our best lives. Then the weather started to turn. And she's like, oh, we're probably gonna have to take this inside. So I was like, for sure, I'll meet you in the parkade tomorrow. <laughs> I don't wanna get too close. And then she's like, why don't I come over? And I was like, Ugh. So then I'm like, I know Jay works late on Tuesday, so I go, why don't you come over Tuesday? We'll have, and she goes, oh, Tuesday doesn't work. How about Wednesday, I bring my husband, and we'll both come over, and he can meet your husband. Yeah, I'm, uh, yes, I have learned this about men. They do not like to randomly be paired up <laughs> with their wives or their girlfriends, friends, husbands. They're not dogs at a dog park. You cannot... <laughs> You can't just pull up and open the door and go, look at them play. <laughs> oh, look at those knuckleheads. <laughs> but again, the bars were closed, so I was like, Jay, just one time, just, it's free wine, just let them come over. <laughs> so begrudgingly, he's like, okay, fine. So they come over, it was fine, but then they started to just randomly pop by. Which is, it is annoying. Even if you like the person, it's like, what are you, a psycho? Call first. <laughs> but then after three months, they suddenly disappeared. And I was like, Jay, what did you do? <laughs> but we didn't hear from them for like three, four months. And then one day I get a knock at the door. I look through the little peephole. It's them. They're standing there very stoically. And I open the door and I'm like, hey guys, where you been? The wife bursts into tears. And she's like, sorry, there's been infidelity in our marriage. It wasn't me. <laughs> I was like, why are you telling me this? And I, like, we don't know each other that well. I didn't know what to say. I just went, oh no. <laughs> Come in. Meanwhile, I hear Jay shutting himself into the bathroom. <laughs> He's got all the meds he needs. <laughs> Safely. So we walk into the, I'm kicking the bathroom door as I go by, like, get out here. And so now all four of us are in the living room. Me and Jay are on the couch. Those two are on the love seat. The husband is staring at the floor. He's, the wife's crying. He's staring at the floor. Jay and I are like, what the fuck? And, and it's also clear at this point that it was the husband that cheated, right? We all get that? Okay, yes. It wasn't her. 
she didn't cheat on him and then go, let's go tell the neighbors I'm a whore. <laughs> it was him. He cheated. And she goes, um, first of all, we want you to know you don't have to choose between us. No problem. We're keeping you. You work at the winery. We don't... We never wanted him. You brought him into our lives. And then she goes, and we're in marriage counseling. And I'm like, oh, please do not start talking to me about your marriage counseling. Like, if you're here as a couple tonight, do not discuss this joke later. You will fight. Never discuss other people's marriage counseling. I'm like, please don't. And she goes, our marriage counselor told us that in a marriage, you have to have 100% honesty. Anybody? A hundo? That is too much honesty. I think 97% is a perfect amount of honesty. Right? 3% goes to the grave. <laughs> and I told her that. I was like, that is way too much honesty. And she goes, no. Even if you develop a crush on someone else, share that with your partner. <laughs> I dared Jay to share that with me. <laughs> I'm a Scorpio. <laughs> if he ever walked in the door and was like, have you met that cutie at the Starbucks? I'd be like... What cutie, what Starbucks, I will burn it to the ground. <laughs> and I go, that is a terrible idea. And she goes, come on, haven't you ever developed a little crush on someone? I go, no, I haven't. And she goes, really? And I'm like looking at her like, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> and then I go, I have not. And then Jay gets involved and I think because I look and he's got that twinkle in his eye that is like, you created this. So here we go. Because Jay goes, oh, Erica, you've never fantasized about another man? I go, no, I haven't. And he goes, bullshit. And I go, I am being 100% honest with you right now. I haven't. I've tried, but I can't. Because I'm a Scorpio. I'm super jealous, but I'm also very, very loyal. Right? So, like, there's, like, a fire hall that's near our apartment building. <laughs> like, it's not near it, but... <laughs> Sometimes I take that way home. <laughs> and occasionally they're out washing the trucks. Wednesdays at 2. And I work at night, so I have nothing to do at the day, so I just pull over and watch my tax dollars at work. <laughs> and in the summertime, it gets real hot, so sometimes the shirts come off. And when you are a woman watching a hot, shirtless man clean something... <laughs> I cannot be responsible for these thoughts. <laughs> I'm just sitting in my car and I'm like, oh my God, I would love to. And then all of a sudden this voice goes, where's Jay? Where's your husband? And I go, oh, he's dead. <laughs> That's how much I love him. I would never cheat. So he stepped in front of a train. And then I try to get back into it, but I think I have ADHD, or at least TikTok says I do. And <laughs> now I'm looking back at the fireman, but then my brain is like, oh my God, Jay's dead. How am I gonna tell his parents? <laughs> and I'm spiraling. I'm like, I have to plan a funeral. Where do you buy little sandwiches? Like, <laughs> so many details. And then I'm picturing myself at the funeral and you get so much attention as a widow. I love that word, widow. And I'm picturing people coming up to me and they're like, you're so brave. And I'm like, thank you, I am. And 
I'm wearing all black, all black. It's so slimming. Like I look good, you know? <laughs> I look good. And I finally have a reason to wear one of those little lace things, you know, like. <laughs> it just goes like over this part of your face. Usually only, only British people wear them, but I'm doing it. I look, I'm smoking, no one stops me. I'm smoking at the funeral home. And then Jay's dad comes over and tells me that Jay has actually doubled his life insurance policy. <laughs> now I'm rich. <laughs> and I just look over and Jay and the couple are staring at me. Jay's like, I'm okay with 97% honesty. <laughs> Kalana, you guys have been wonderful. Thank you so much. Good night.